Well, there is. <laughs> 80295, back me up here. Um, Maria from Perth says, I've got a question for Rob. Uh, we have a five-month-old Labrador who is the dog from K9 Hello. Um, I don't know. Oh, I, I think this is maybe, is this an advert or something? Cute little dog, I'm not quite sure. Uh, despite him having plenty of toys, treats, etc., he still wants to chew everything that he shouldn't. We've taken him to a trainer who's described him as a muppet. Um, he had to be, uh, I think, caged at night, or he would eat his way through the w every wire, cushions, etc. He gets plenty walks and exercises, but we're worried that he will harm himself. Well, Labrador's... What do they want? Labrador's are like that, aren't they? I think every dog loves to share when they're about five months old. So I think that's the key thing in, in terms of Maria's type. The reason about it, or that the connection is that five months old dogs are teasing and teasing quite rapidly. So. They want to chew everything and anything, so I think um, right, so it's not unusual it's behavior. Not unusual behavior. I mean, you know, this is something where ideally what you do is get some things that are good for them to chew that aren't going to break up or damage them. So you do get like chew toys made of really strong um, rubber that isn't going to be damaging their gums or their teeth. You want to avoid things that break up, so certainly there is a range of chew toys that are um, I don't know if it's a key for them. Well, I must have bought them. You can actually give us chew toys. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm sorry, I saw one of those the other day. <laughs> uh, they're maybe not so good just to can break up and become stuck in your teeth, but you want a good chew toy. <laughs> and you want then, a politician stuck in your teeth. <laughs> it should all settle down over the next sort of four to six weeks as the teething um, finishes off. So that's the window, is it? That's the window. No, it's five and a half to six months of teeth. Choosing and normally the adult people are from around about six months old. All right, okay, so the end is in sight, hopefully. Yeah. yeah, okay, all right. Um, well, the end is in sight for us as well. Uh, thank you very much. Um, thank so, you. I'll see you in 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm loving seeing 2020. It sounds so cool, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure it's 2019, isn't it? Please. So well, thanks for doing the whole year and uh, thanks for taking on any and every uh, question that's been thrown at you and putting up the hypothetic order you've got. Um, it's been a real pleasure and we look forward to seeing you in 2020 as we call it. Um, it there, I'm going to be back with you tomorrow from 9 o'clock and of uh, course on a Wednesday the court is in session. Okay, we can be in fact. Uh, with this week's dilemma. I think she's still musing on it at the moment, to be honest, but I'm sure it will be an absolute porker. Um, also, I wanted to make something that would give me as many customers as possible, so I decided to make soap, because everyone really? can use it at least once a week. <laughs> That's now your entrepreneur, Amelia, on how she created her own brand of soap. I think she's onto something, I think. Soap is going to be the future. You think I'm mad? I do, actually. Uh, and for some people, it might be. It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> hmm, others it's not. How do you deal with social anxiety at Christmas? I'll be joined by the stylist who learned to say no and the host of a new Scottish podcast, Radio Day, on how to deal uh, with uh, social anxiety at the Cycle over it, nice and wet leaves. Catch up on the conversation. Yes, I I'll stand on it. The BBC Mornings with Kay Adams on BBC Hello. Radio Scotland. Uh, when Beth Morrison started campaigning against the use of restraint in schools, it was for the sake of her own son, who had been held face oh. down for 40 minutes by four adults and returned home shaking. Nearly 10 years on, her son has left school, but she has continued fighting for change, and now it seems that she's won the day, and she's here to, to tell us. Well, good morning to you, Beth. Good morning, Kate. Good morning. Um, also that? with us this morning, Nick Hall, head same. of advice and investigation at the Office of the Children and Young People's Commissioner. Morning to you, Nick. Good morning. Good morning. And with me in the studio here, Jan Savage, uh, who's the Director of Campaigns and External Affairs at Enable. Hi, Jan. Hi, Jan. Hi, thanks for joining us. So, Beth, tell us about this wrong road you've been on. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's um, over nine years now. Mm. Uh, nice slippy green moss. Road, um, but nice slippy green moss. My dogged determination yeah. and uh, passion for the, the the cause just kept me going, and I knew that I couldn't walk away because this was no longer about my son. This was about other children who were like Callum, who used their behaviour to communicate with us because our children have very limited language and communication skills. 
and if they can't say, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm in pain, they only have their behaviour to communicate that things aren't going well. So tell us a little bit about Callum, as much as you're comfortable with, mm. and, and some of the issues that he was facing. Um, this was when he was around 11, really, this mm. became an issue, is that right? Yeah, he was, he was 11. Callum has epilepsy, he has cerebral palsy, he's on the autistic spectrum, he had very, very limited communication 